Hi, and welcome to a friendly introduction to convolutional neural networks and image recognition. My name is Luis Serrano, and this is a picture of me. And I work at Udacity. I, I teach machine learning and artificial intelligence there. So today, in this video, we're going to learn uh, how the computers do to recognize images using convolutional neural networks. So let's start with a very simple world. This simple world has one person. It has one computer. The computer has a screen of resolution 2 pixels by 2 pixels and it has a keyboard with two keystrokes and the reason it's two keystrokes is because in this simple world our alphabet has only two letters a backward slash and a forward slash so in this simple world the uh, conversations are very simple uh, Scrabble games are very easy and the alphabet song is actually very simple too. It goes like this, backward slash and forward slash. So let's look at what happens when we use the keyboard in this world. So here we have the computer. If we press the key in the right, which is the backward slash, this is what happens in the screen. It kind of draws a backward slash with the, with the pixels. Uh, and if we press the left key, so the forward slash, it draws a forward slash with the pixels. But we want to add some sophistication in this world. So we actually want to create an image recognition software. So we want that if we tell the computer, if we feed the computer this image of a uh, backward slash, the computer says that's a backward slash. And if we feed the computer an image of a forward slash, the computer says that's a forward slash. So we're gonna teach the computer to tell these two apart. Now let's think of how computers think because computers don't see things the way we see them, right? We see them as the two by two thing, but computers see pixels as numbers. So let's say the red pixel, it sees it as a one and the gray pixel, it sees it as a negative one. So it, it basically what, what the computer sees in, the, in the, the top image, which for us is a backward slash, the computer reads it as a line. So from left to right, and bottom to top so it goes minus one 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 minus one and the one on the bottom the forward slash it reads it and as a line like this uh, minus one 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 minus one so now let's try to think the way a computer thinks so we we have to do some mathematical operations that will tell these two things apart that will give us a certain value for one and a certain value for the other one um, what operations could we use? So what is it? Let's think about it for a minute. What is the simplest operation we can do on these numbers? Uh, well, a pretty simple one is just add them, right? If you add plus one, minus one, plus one, plus minus one, plus minus one, plus one, we get zero. And if we add the ones on the bottom, we get again zero. So that operation wasn't too good because it, it can't really tell them apart. Um, what about, I don't know, multiplying them? If we multiply 1 minus 1 minus 1 and 1, we get a 1. And the bottom, we also get a 1. So that's not good either. So let's think about it for a minute. Let's, let's actually, if you feel free to pause the video and, 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 and give it a thought of what mathematical operations will, will separate these, these, two, these two strings of numbers. So maybe, maybe you thought that uh, the first one plus the last one or the, two, the sum of the two middle ones. And those are pretty good. Um, the, the best one is, or what I think is the best one is, is this one, right? If you put the plus and minuses in these positions, then it turns out that you want to add the first one, subtract the second one, subtract the third one, and add the fourth one. So what happens if we have, if we do this on the top one, we get a plus one, minus minus one is a plus one, minus minus one is a plus one, and plus one, so we get a four. And for the bottom one, we have plus minus one, plus minus one, minus one, minus one, plus minus one. So we get a minus four. So there, we can finally tell these two apart. So our rule, as we have our, we have constructed our first image recognition classifier, it says the following. It says, take your image, add the number on the top left, subtract the number on the top right, subtract the number in the bottom left, add the number in the bottom right, and if what you got was positive, then you have a backward slash. And if you, what you got was negative, then you have a forward slash. 
And this, actually, this classifier is pretty good because it's pretty robust. Let's look at these images. What do they look like? So to me, the top one looks like a poorly drawn backward slash because it looks like I was drawing the backward slash and spilled over a little bit. Uh, and the bottom one kind of looks like a forward slash except I ran out of ink in the middle of it and I didn't finish drawing it. But what does the computer see? So it sees this, 1, 1, minus 1, 1, because it reads it from left to right and from top to bottom. And on the bottom, it reads these, a minus 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. And if we use our, our existing classifier, what do we get? So the plus, minus, minus, plus. On the top one, we get plus 1, minus 1, um, minus 1 is 1, which is plus 1, plus 1, so we get a 2. And in the bottom one, we get minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, minus 1 which is negative two. So check it out. The computer could actually tell poorly drawn backwards and forwards diagonals. So that's, that's pretty good. And that's something we want in our classifier. So we want it to be robust. Now, the question is, how did we do this? Because as humans, we could, we could figure it out, right? We could, we could kind of eyeball the filter and, and, and that will tell a part of the diagonal from another diagonal. The computer can't think that way. Right? What can a computer do? A computer can check a lot of things quickly. So a computer could actually maybe go through all the possibilities. These are the, these are the, the, the possibilities of, of minus and pluses in, in the corners and checks all of them. And it turns out that uh, all of them work pretty badly, pretty poorly, and two of them work pretty well. So it just picks one of those that worked really well and, and that's it. Uh, but we checked 16 choices. Now, 16 choices is not that much, but let's think about it. You have a world with two letters. You have two images for your classifier and a screen of two by two. And you still have to check 16 things. So imagine how many things you have to check if you have the computers that we have right now with so many pixels and so many colors and we want to tell many, many images apart. The, number of possibilities is humongous so we can't really check them all we have to find them in a smart way so let me give you an idea of what the computer does is this is not really what it does but i'm going to give you a vague idea it starts with a random one so the one we started is adding all the numbers we saw that that didn't work so well because it couldn't tell the diagonals apart so that works so so but let's make small changes to this one let's see and try to change each one of the pluses into a minus separately and see how they do so the one at the top, let's say it uh, does worse, the next one does better, the next one worse, the next one better. So let's pick one of the ones that did better. And again, make small changes uh, in the minuses and let's say this was worse, better and worse. So let's pick the better one and let's stop when we're happy about it. So that's what we did. So that was a little big, but that's the idea of what's happening. Now, uh, in reality, uh, we don't just have the power of the number plus one and minus one. We can use uh, many numbers. We can we can use uh, decimal values, 0 0.5, 1.2, 0 0.7, pretty much pretty much continuous values. Uh, so now we have even more possibilities. We have infinitely many, and the computer can't really check infinitely many possibilities. So what we do is the continuous version of what we did before. It's called gradient descent. So we start with four random numbers. And we see how this classifier does. So it makes lots of errors. And by the way, the way classifier does, if you, if you saw a plus, it used to add the number. Now, if you see a 0.5, what it does is multiply the number by 0.5 and adds it. And the next number by 1.2 and adds it and, and so on and so forth. Um, so we see that this classifier makes lots of errors. And we want to go in this direction until we find one that makes few errors. So we take our numbers and we change them slightly and we try to see uh, in what direction can we change them so that we get something with less errors. And then we do it again and then we kind of follow this path until we do this many times and we get something that's pretty good with few errors. And then we end up with that. Now, of course, this sounded very vague, but what we're really doing is we're taking the derivative, okay? So we take, the, we take an error function that, can, that measures how, how many errors are we making in a continuous way and then take the gradient 
and that will point us in the direction that we that we grow the most. So the negative of the gradient will, will point to the direction that we that we decrease the most, and we keep making steps in the direction of this gradient until we get to a point where we make few errors, and that's like the the building block of neural networks. Um, so yeah, this is by no means an easy process. It takes us a lot of computing power to calculate all these derivatives, but it's doable, and there are many shortcuts. Uh, such as stochastic gradient descent, or etc. Um, but we're not going to get into that. We're going to go to a slightly more complex world. So now we don't have our two by two world. Now we have the next thing. We have a one person. We have one computer, and now its uh, resolution is three by three. And now we don't have two letters. We have four letters. We have a a backwards diagonal, a forwards diagonal, an X, and an O. And the reason is because our alphabet now has four letters. So this is the simplest world in, in which uh, a human can actually uh, express emotion. So let's see what happens when we press our keys on the screen. This is what we get. The backward slash, the forward slash, the X, and the O. And now the question is, how do we create a classifier that tells these letter parts? So we can start in the same way as before. We can put some pluses and minuses and try to and try to figure it out. But we're going to quickly notice that this starts failing. And the reason it starts failing is that it, it misses the point of the image, right? In the image, you can have a letter in different places of the, of the screen. You can have big letters, small letters, different types. Uh, in, in reality, this is not what we want to do. What we want to do is kind of break the image apart into smaller images and then analyze those or, or do this repeatedly. So let's look at some previous knowledge. Let's look at what we learned from the simple world. From the simple world, we learned that this is a backward slash and that this is a forward slash. So let's use that to break our other images apart. Really, what we kind of want to do here is this is our X, this is our O, our diagonal and our other diagonal. And we break them apart into our, our, our simpler pieces that we get already figured out. So the X looks like this combination of diagonals. The O looks like this combination of diagonals. And the forward slash looks like this. And the backward slash looks like this. And then we're going to take another step to turn this into an X, turn this into an O, turn this into a diagonal, uh, forward diagonal, and this into a backwards diagonal. Uh, this, this process I will explain. I'm just giving you a, 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 an idea. The, the first part is called a convolutional layer together with a pooling layer. And the second one is called a fully connected layer. So the convolutional pooling layer, what it does is it breaks the image into smaller pieces. And then the fully connected layer takes those pieces and, and, and reads them, uses logic to figure out which, um, which, pieces, uh, which combination of pieces is which letter. So let's, let's do this in detail. So here we have our three by three pixelated image of an X. And then the two uh, little two by two boxes that are beside it on the arrows, these are called the filters. Okay, so there's one filter with pluses and minuses in the top for, for, the, for the backwards diagonal and one filter for the forwards diagonal. And we're gonna apply these filters to the image by sliding them across and seeing when we can find a diagonal. So, we're going to start with the top one. We put it here. And what we do is we overimpose the, the pluses and the minuses with the numbers. And we, we multiply them. So we say, we, we say plus 1, minus minus 1, minus minus 1, plus 1. So that's 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 4. Okay. And then the next layer says, if you found a big number, it means I found the, 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 the piece I was looking for. So, so this, since this filter is the filter for this diagonal, then combining these two arrows says, I found a backwards diagonal in the top left corner. Now we move here and we do the same thing. Min plus minus one, minus one, minus one, plus minus one, that's a minus four. And the next layer says, you know what, your number's too small, I didn't find anything. And again, we go here and we get a minus four. So the next layer says, nope, too small. And the last one says, uh, we get a plus four, so we did find a diagonal. And we're gonna see where, where that threshold is that says plus four is big and minus four is small. We're gonna see it in a bit. But for now, let's use the other filter. So this filter will find a forward diagonal. We put it here, 
and we do the operations minus one plus minus one plus minus one minus one that's a minus four so the next one says I didn't find anything too small the next one says uh, minus minus one plus one I'll let you figure out the rest this is a four so we did find this diagonal because this is the filter for the forwards diagonal uh, the next one says again we get a four we find the diagonal and the next one says it's a minus four we didn't find anything and the left, the left part is called a convolution layer, is the one that takes the filter and slides it through the image to see what it finds. And the next one is the pooling layer, which is the one that says, says I'm going to get a threshold. And if you, have, if you give me a number bigger than that threshold, I'm going to say you found it. If you give me a number smaller than that threshold, I'm going to say you didn't find it. And finally, what we do is we take the two images on the right and overimpose them. And now the computer sees this 3x3 three three pixelated image on the left as this 2x2 two two image on the right formed of diagonals. So it's, 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 it simplifies the image. Uh, for clarity, let's do it for, for the other one. Let's do it for the O. So we're going to apply this filter, the top filter. What do we get here? Minus 4, right? So the next one says, I didn't find anything. Here we get a 4, so we found this diagonal. Here we get a 4 again, so this found the diagonal. Here we get a minus 4, so we didn't find anything. And with the bottom filter, we have a 4, minus minus 1, plus 1, plus 1, minus minus 1. We found this diagonal. Here a minus 4, so we found nothing. Here a minus 4, so we found nothing. And here a 4, so we found the diagonal. And now we overimpose them, and we get this. And, and just, just for clarity, actually, we, we do need to do this. Uh, let's, let's go over the next one. Let's go over the backwards diagonal. So applying the first filter, here we get a 4. Applying the, uh, on the next and then on the next 2 by 2 square, we get a negative 2, right? Because it's, it's minus 1 plus 1, minus 1, minus 1. So minus 2. Too small, we didn't find anything. Then we apply it here. Again, we get a minus 2. We didn't find anything. And here we get a 4, so we found something. And now this, this part is uh, slightly interesting. Check this out. If we use the other filter, here we get a minus 4. Here we get a 2, because it's plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, plus 1. Uh, but let's say our threshold is 3. So even though we get a 2, the next uh, pooling layer is going to say, no, nah, I didn't find anything. So this one didn't find anything. And later I'll tell you how to find these thresholds, but for now I'm just, just pretend it's magic. Uh, here again we got a 2, and here we get a 4, sorry, a minus 4. So the second filter didn't find anything. There were no uh, forwards diagonal in this image. That's fine. We overimpose the two images on the right, and we get that the 3x3 three three backwards diagonal looks like this combination of two backwards diagonals in a 2x2 two two grid. And just for consistency, this is the last one too. Apply the top filter, we get a 2, so we found nothing because the threshold is 3. Minus 4, we found nothing. Minus 4, we found nothing. 2, we found nothing. So the top filter found nothing. And the bottom filter, as you can imagine, gets a minus 2 here, nothing. It gets a 4 here, so it finds a diagonal. Again, a 4, so it finds a diagonal. And nothing here because it finds a minus 2. And overimposes this two on the right, gets this. So where do we are? Where are we now? Well, let's summarize a little bit. What we did is called a convolution layer plus a pooling layer. The convolution layer takes a little smaller image and, and, and slides it over your image. And the pooling layer checks if we found it or not by checking if it's over a, a, a threshold or under a threshold. And now I'm going to show you what the fully connected layer does. What the fully connected layer does is it takes what the convolution and pooling layer gave us and uses logic to figure out what uh, image it is. So let's, uh, let's summarize again. We have our X, our O, our forward diagonal, and our back diagonal. And this is the way the computer now sees them after the convolutional and pooling layers, right? But let's remember again that the computer doesn't really see things in, in two by two ways. It, it, it actually reads it as a string. So it reads the X in the following way, backwards diagonal, forwards diagonal, forwards diagonal, backwards diagonal. And then it reads the O as like forwards diagonal, backwards diagonal, blah, you get the point, right? Uh, it reads the, 
the forward diagonal as blank, forward diagonal, forward diagonal, blank, and the, the backwards diagonal as backwards diagonal, blank, blank, backwards diagonal. And now this part is my, is my absolute favorite, is when we start creating the filters. Uh, in the same way that the filters before told us what was a backwards diagonal, a forward diagonal, we're going to create four filters. So let's first uh, encode this as a matrix. Okay, so the matrix is going to tell us where did we find a forward diagonal and where did we find a backwards diagonal. If you like vector spaces, think of this as a vector space with bases, the two diagonals. Uh, but if you don't, don't worry about it. Let's look at this, this uh, backwards diagonal, and let's compare it with every uh, element in our in our string before, so every letter in our word, because now we have words of length four. Uh, in the first position, it's the same as, as what we have, so we put a one. Then in the second position, it's not the same, so we put a minus one. Then it's not the same, so we put a minus one, and it's the same, so we put a one. So we compare them, and if they're the same, we put a one, and if they're not the same, we put a minus one. Now let's try it with the other diagonal. We compare it, it's not the same, minus one, it is the same, one, it is the same, one, and it is not the same, so we put a minus one. So we encoded this x as this little four by two matrix uh, with entries one, minus one, minus one, one, etc. We can do the same process, and I'll, I'll let you do it yourself. Feel free to pause the video and, and do it yourself. But the, the, the second one becomes this, because those are the positions where we found the two diagonals. The third one becomes this, and the fourth one becomes this. So now, basically what happens is that the pooling layer and the convolution layer have encoded our 3x3 three three, uh, pixelated images on the left as this little matrix in the right. Uh, and uh, so let's let's uh, do it again. These are our four letters and the corresponding uh, matrices. And now we're going to create our filters. The filters are those those green pluses and minuses that we created at the, at the beginning. And they're actually very easy to create. It's just the same thing. This is the filter for the X. This is the filter for the O. This is the filter for the forward diagonal. And this is the filter for the backwards diagonal. And what's going to happen is we're going to compare our matrix with every filter. So here's our x, here's our, our encoded x, and how do ha what happens when you compare it to every filter? Well, we do the same thing as the convolution step. We take, we take the, the sign and use it on every one of the numbers. So the first one is plus 1, so plus 1. The second one is minus, minus 1, so we get a plus 1. The third one's minus, minus 1, so we get a plus 1. Then plus, then plus one, then plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. And we add all these numbers, and so we get a score of eight. So what we did is exactly what we did in the convolution step at the beginning, except with a, just a bigger bigger filter. What happens if we do it on the second one? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you do this yourself, but if you do it on the second one, you notice that everything is a minus one, and so you get a minus eight. Uh, on the third one, you know, you, you'll see that you get a, a plus four. And on the last one, you also get a four. So if you take the numbers on the right and pick the biggest one as the winner, turns out that this is the winner. So we conclude that our three by three pixelated image on the left is an X. Okay, let's do the O. So in the O, you can do this yourself, but the first filter gives you minus eight. The second filter gives you eight. The third filter gives you minus four, and the fourth one minus four, so the second one wins. We conclude that this image is an O. And for the diagonal, we get four, minus four, eight, and zero. The third one wins. For the backwards diagonal, we get four, minus four, zero, and eight. So the last one wins, so we conclude that this is a backwards diagonal. So in summary, this is what we did. We have our pixelated images. The computer now reads them using the convolutional, the pooling layer, as these two by two uh, um, images formed of little diagonals. And then the logic using the filters 
helps the computer read the first thing as an X, the second thing as an O, and the, the other two as the corresponding diagonals. And the first step is convolution layer plus pooling layer. The second step is a fully connected layer. So let's actually draw a picture of how this works. Here is, again, our pixelated X. And we applied two filters, right? The forwards diagonal and the backwards diagonal. And each filter, we applied it on every single 2 by 2 square. So in total, we applied eight filters. Here are the eight filters, right? The top four are moving, sliding the, the, the backwards diagonal across the image. And the bottom four are sliding the forwards diagonal across the image. This is the convolution layer. Now, whenever we get a large number, the pooling layer says, you found something. So the pooling layer here says, oh, you found the, the backwards diagonal here, then you found it here, then you found the forwards diagonal here, etc. That's what the pooling layer does. Now, after the pooling layer, then things become these kind of matrices. So your, your pixelated image doesn't look like a pixelated image anymore. Now it looks like these little matrices. And now the last, what the last layer does is it takes all the filters for each letter and it applies every filter to the letter that you get. And each filter gives you a score. This is the fully connected layer. Each filter gives you a score and then you take the highest score and that one wins. So this three by three pixelated X, the computer figures out after all this process that it was an X. So let's see, let's see what happens with the, with the actual X that we, that we put in here. The X goes through all the convolutional layers and the only ones that fire are these ones over here where the pooling layer finds the corresponding diagonal, right? So after the convolutional pooling layer, the computer now sees the X as this matrix here formed of ones and minus ones. And now it tries it with each of the filters and you get scores of eight minus eight, four and four. So it picks the biggest number and that's the one that wins. So that's how we figured out that it's an X. But now you may have the same question in mind. How does the computer figure all this out? Look how much work it took us to find the filters and to, and to find the fully connected uh, the layer and, and, and the convolutions, etc. cetera. Um, computer can't figure out this out that, that easily. So what it does, it's, it's very similar than before. It's gradient descent. So it starts with some random numbers for everything, for the filters, for the convolution layer, for everything. And it checks that uh, there are lots of errors and it tries to move in the direction of having fewer errors. So again, it takes an error function and finds the, the derivative or the gradient and, and, and uses the gradient to walk in the direction that makes it uh, decrease and decrease the error function until it gets to a point that it has very few errors. And when it gets to a point that it has very few errors, it says, I'm happy, I'm good, this is my convolutional neural network with my parameters, and I'm done. So that's, that's how the computer does it. Uh, now let's, uh, let's go to a more advanced world. What happens if we have an advanced world with lots of people, uh, a computer with tons of pixels, huge resolution, lots of colors, an alphabet of many letters and not just letters but many images that we want to classify. Uh, how do we do it? Well it's the same the same thing. So here's a, a, an example. Uh, in the left you have a picture, a picture of a boat and you can see that this neural network has uh, two convolutional and pooling layers. It can have more but basically the first convolutional layer what it does is it just slides a little square image over your, over your uh, image the pooling layer starts figuring out what, what pieces you start getting. Then you, you repeat it, convolutional pooling layer, etc., until you break your image down as much as you can. And then you apply one or maybe several fully connected layers to, uh, which is just a, a regular neural network on, on, on the data that you got uh, from the convolutional pooling layers to figure out what you got. So here, for example, you can see that uh, this classifier classifies if something's a dog, a cat, a boat, and a bird. And for this particular image, a boat gave you a high score of 0.94, which, uh, whereas a uh, dog, cat, and bird gave you very, very small scores. 
of 0 0.1, 0 0.4, and 0.2. So this convolutional neural network uh, figures out that the image is a boat. And what you have to do to train it is give it lots and lots and lots of images and tell it when the image is a dog, when the image is a cat, a boat, and a bird, and use gradient descent to, to minimize the number of errors in your, in your training set in order to find all the parameters of the neural network. And again, by parameters, I mean the numbers on each filter, the numbers on each convolution, uh, etc. cetera. Um, another example, if you wanna do it for, for recognizing faces, um, the, the, in the same way that we took an X and cut it into, into little diagonals and took an O and cut it into little diagonals and then the diagonal cut it into pixels, um, when you try to recognize faces uh, with a convolutional ne neural network, this, this is what happens in the layers. The first layer will, will start uh, recognizing little, little lines, uh, little dots, little circles. And the next layer will put the little circles and figure out that if I have a, a circle with a line, I get an eye. And if I have two circles and a couple of lines, I get a nose and a mouth and etc. And then the next layer is going to take the mouth and the, the nose and eyes and put them together into a face in the same way that we build the X's and the O. So it's just more complicated and you have to use more layers, but the idea is, is, is there. That's, that's what, what's really happening. And, and the training, the same way, uh, lots of examples, lots of images and gradient descent. So that's all folks. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you liked it, please subscribe so that you can get a, a informed of more videos. Uh, please hit like, uh, help me share this around, and uh, I love it when you comment. I, I really like reading the comments and uh, take them very seriously. So if I see something like a, a suggestion for a, for a next video, I, I try to do that. As a matter of fact, this video happened because a few people suggested that I do a convolutional neural networks video. Um, so yes, this is my data. Find me on uh, Twitter. Um, get in touch if you, if you have any suggestions, um, if you have any feedback. I'd love to hear it. And uh, as I said, I work at Udacity. So I, uh, I teach machine learning and artificial intelligence there. So if you like what I saw, feel free to go check out the courses there. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.